can go to talk to Sam Green now. He's director at the Russia Institute at King's College London. Uh, very good to talk to you, Sam Green. Uh, well, let's talk about our agency here. Do you think this does that fingers should be pointing towards Moscow? Well, look, I mean, I, we, we've heard a lot, we've been told a lot, um, but we haven't been given a lot of evidence yet. So uh, the, the reality is if the government is serious about um, coming up with a robust response um, when and if the evidence does lead to Moscow, um, uh, they're going to, to need to back up that response with a very hard chain of evidence. So they're not, nobody does uh, that response any favors now uh, by uh, by jumping to conclusions. I mean, it, Russia does seem like the most likely um, story, given what we know both of the background of this case, which isn't, to be honest, a tremendous amount, but of course, given the, the track record and the state of the relationship, the fact that we have seen things like this uh, before. Right? Um, but that's not the kind of case that a prosecutor would want to take to court, and it's presumably also not uh, the the type of case that uh, a foreign secretary would want to take into a diplomatic uh, battle, as it were. And in terms of motivation, have you any thoughts on this? We've been discussing it on the, I suppose, the unwritten convention when it comes to spy exchanges, as Mr. Skripal was involved in. It's pretty pointless then, further down the line, taking action against one of those spies that's uh, been return because then you're not going to get another exchange. Well, I mean, it, to a certain extent, we read the tea leaves on things like that. I mean, the reality is that if there are unwritten rules of espionage, um, uh, they are unwritten and, and they're certainly not legible to, us out, to, to those of us outside of, of that particular game, right? Um, so we're always guessing around the margins of, 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 of both what these rules might have been and what somebody might have done to, to transgress them. I mean, uh, uh, Mr. Skripal has, has kept uh, a relatively low profile here in the UK, unlike uh, Litvinenko or, or other uh, Russian, some cases, foreign, uh, for former officials and, and dissidents who've ended up in and around um, uh, London, uh, right? He hasn't been an active dissident. Uh, he hasn't been uh, challenging uh, the Kremlin in any way. But of course, that's only the public side of things. We don't know uh, what he might have been doing uh, uh, quietly, sort of in, in, in his own time, right? So um, uh, th there, there's a lot that still has to come to light, I think, before we can say anything intelligent about, um, uh, about motive. I think there are some things we can rule out, right? The idea that this would have been done um, yeah, in order to boost Putin's ratings uh, for the upcoming presidential election on, on the 18th of March strikes me as, as fairly uh, uh, fantastical. He's going to win those elections without much difficulty anyway. Right? Um, but, um, uh, you know, the, the other part of this is that uh, we have to be careful what we mean by the Russian state when we think about Russia having done this, right? Uh, when we look at things that Russia's done that, that we're less than happy about, whether it's assassinations in Russia of, of people like the opposition leader, Boris Nimtsov, or whether it is playing around the margins of elections in the U.S. or, or other countries, a lot of these things are being done by people operating at uh, sort of an arm's length distance from the command and control structure, right, uh, who believe that they are allowed to and encouraged to, to, to do things that the Kremlin will find um, uh, pleasurable, right? um, but without having to, to wait for direct orders uh, uh, from, uh, from the commander in chief, right? So as a result, right, uh, there is always the possibility uh, that things happen that, that maybe we're not um, entirely meant to happen. Uh, just very briefly, Mr. Green, uh, I mean, is there a, a possibility that somebody with a grudge, he was a double agent after all, could have uh, attacked, could have gone for Mr. Skripal? Well, I mean, it's possibly, it's certainly possible that an attack like that could have happened. I think what, when we learn more about uh, the toxicology of this, I mean, it, I, I don't know what's scarier. Is it scarier to think that the Kremlin might have been able to, or might have decided to, to order uh, a, a nerve gas attack uh, on British soil, uh, right? Uh, or is it scarier to think that uh, somebody might have done this sort of on their own initiative? OK. I'm sorry, we are, we're out of time, Mr Green. Thank you very much indeed, uh, Sam Green. There Well, plenty more coming up uh, on the investigation on this mystery here in Salisbury. But that's it from me.